Here we go. Here we go, Jim. Here we go. Good job. Good job. One more. One more, Gary. Yeah, baby. Yeah, baby. Active, active, active. Tall, Gary. Good look. Good look. Good job, Grady. And, and I love your hands there. I love hands. Good, Gary. Good, Gary. Give me that one. Yes. Yeah, Gary. The Raptors' third ever in-season tournament game was played without consequence. Five hours before the Toronto Raptors and Chicago Bulls tipped off, the Orlando Magic beat the Boston Celtics and therefore sealing the fate of both teams, eliminating them from the in-season tournament. Regardless, there was regular season basketball at stake and the Toronto Raptors had a chance to get back to 500 and they did with a comfortable win over the Bulls. It's called the NBA game. It's, uh, it's uh, if you watch every single night, it's happening around the league. Like this league is the best players in the world. You know, I don't think that you can go in a game and have a 15 point lead and keep it during the whole game. The Raptors started the game out in dominant fashion and led by 14 points at halftime. And that was largely because there wasn't much resistance from the Bulls defense. Pascal Siakam did a great job of involving his teammates, dishing out seven of his eight assists in the first half and generating open looks for the Raptors shooters including OG Ananobi and Gary Trent Jr., who put up 25 points combined through two quarters. Siakam's gravity in the post and through isolations continues to become an ever-important part of the Raptors' offense. And as a whole, Toronto has done a great job of moving the rock, dishing out 32 assists on 44 made shots tonight. This is now their 12th consecutive game with 25-plus assists, a franchise record. Uh, it just shows our focus out there on the floor. I'm just trying to keep the ball moving and keep it uh, going around side to side. I felt we feel like we get some good offense that way. Uh, sometimes we get stagnant, but we just keep trying to get back to it. Um, no matter what type of shot we get, we just try to hang our heads, run back on defense, get a stop, take the ball out and try to push it right back and try to get a good possession each and every time. Uh, it's definitely hard to guard for the other team when everyone's involved and everyone's in actions and everyone's being aggressive looking to score. Yes, we were hoping to get 60 assists tonight, but uh, we fall off after a little bit. No, I'm joking. Uh, obviously, the first quarter like, was high-level basketball, and uh, we really moved the ball, and uh, we were finding each other in that uh, first half. Pascal himself had the seven assists. I thought that we did a really good job there, and uh, we we're always trying and targeting to have 30 plus assists and uh, you know and try to always get more than 32 deflections and tonight we hit we hit both now, Zach Levine had a valiant effort to keep this one interesting. He scored 18 points in the first half and finished with 36, but ultimately the Bulls looked lethargic in general, not playing defense, not able to get into rhythm offensively until the fourth quarter when they made a late surge to cut it to seven points. But at that point, it was Scotty Barnes, who was a team high plus 19 tonight with 13 points, 10 rebounds, six assists, one steal and two blocks that helped shut the down the Bulls come back and get the Raptors back to 500. The role is, you know, I'm trying to be aggressive when I'm out there on the floor, but, you know, we're just trying to get good shots and play good basketball. I feel like that's going to find us out there on the floor. Uh, no matter what's going on, once we move the ball around, get some good shots, you know, that's, that's what it is. Uh, we're going to have some good production when we're out there on the floor. Uh, I don't really know the specific, you know, I don't, I'm just going out there playing each and every game. Just trying to go out there and try to win. Scotty was outstanding. You know, he was plus 19 every time when he was on the floor. He was so good for us. And uh, uh, when he sets the tone defensively and with rebounding and bold movement, like it's it's really hard to play against him and again against us. Now the Bulls move to 5 and 12 on the season after dropping this one plummeting down the Eastern Conference standings and there is questions looming about the future of this team particularly with Zach Levine and where he might get traded to but for the Raptors it seems like they're figuring things out especially head coach Darko Ryakovich who continues to fine tune his rotations and figure out what lineups work ultimately this team looks more comfortable than it ever has figuring things out offensively looking potent defensively and more and more after 16 games it looks like the Raptors are figuring things out. I mean we're coming together um, we're doing it uh, all together on a defensive end and on offensive end um, finding the chemistry you know uh, try to enjoy it um, 
I mean, it's fun out there to play like that. And um, of course, when you win, uh, it's extra sweet. But um, we just want to keep, you know, um, every day try to get better and want to play our best basketball, you know, in March, uh, April. Um, but at the end of the day, uh, winning games right now is important. So we try to, you know, um, get as most as we can. I scored 121 points. The more points we score, there is more food on the table to eat. You know, if uh, one player scores 40 and the other three and nobody else scores points, there is not enough food on the plate, on the table. And when we score, like, when we play like that, there is more to divide. And, and that's, that's, uh, that's a motto that we're going uh, after everybody eats and everybody's playing together and we got, everybody's got to share. So I'm really, really proud. I, I don't hear words to describe how much I'm proud of our guys and their unselfishness and willingness to play together. Now the Raptors won this one in particular, thanks in large part to OG Ananobi, who finished with a season high 26 points on 14 shots and as usual played stellar defense on DeMar DeRozan and Zach Levine. This type of game shows you the two-way ability of Ananobi doing so in a refined role and figuring out what he can be at his maximized level and that is what we're going to dive into in the film room. I've always thought that the fully actualized version of OG Ananobi, the prime version of OG Ananobi, will be much closer to prime Klay Thompson than it is prime Kawhi Leonard. And it's not an apples to apples comparison, but a lot of people like to fantasize about what OG can inevitably become because of the self-creation reps. You know, he's this big 3 and D type player that if he can just become a little bit more potent off of the dribble, he can be, you know, a Kawhi Leonard all-star type. Whereas I think is the most effective, where he'll be the most effective, how he'll be the most effective is actually reducing and maximizing the amount of creation that he has through his dribbling. Last night, OG had a season high 26 points and he did it on 13 dribbles. That's it, just 13 dribbles, but it was his fully maximized self and let's go through how he did that. Okay, so a big part of the equation with OG obviously is the shooting off of the catch and just in general spot up shooting. He is an awesome shooter for his career. He's shooting 38% on four attempts through his career. This season, he's shooting 38% on a career high in attempts at 6.5. OG has been in and around 40% 40, 40 pretty much throughout his career. Um, I think that is his best and absolute most ideal quality. The fact that he can hit spot up shots, the fact that he can space the floor for you. OG has been the Raptors most consistent shooter this season and that makes him one of the most important players for this offense. That showed tonight because when he's hitting his shots, it opens up the rest of the team offensively. When he can have this floor spacer, it becomes so much harder to stop the size of the Raptors. And you add on to the fact that because of OG's own size and athletic ability, he's an incredible transition player. Right now, he uses one of those dribbles, gets a nice and one in the lane. And his transition play is because of his brute strength, just being able to feast. And this is, this is him in the post, another area where he thrives in, just using his strength, cutting off of the ball, not using excessive dribbles, getting in the paint, and, and scoring. And the great thing is that OG is a much improved passer. He's averaging a career high in assist percentage this season. And I think part of that is just his ability to get downhill, attack closeouts, see the defense, read it, and make these beautiful passes. This time, he attacks the corner, makes a nice dump off pass to Jakob Pertl, a nice touch pass to get it to Gary Trent Jr. being the connective piece on offense. And here, this is probably where he's most improved as a playmaker. It's through these pick and rolls. And he made a really nice pass to Malachi Flynn against Indiana. He made a nice one tonight too against Chicago. Takes the pick and roll, one step, bounce. He, he sees the help. He sees it. He reads it. He knows the guy is open. He's tall enough to make the pass over top and a beautiful pass to Jakob Pertl for the lay-in. And by the way, that doesn't mean he's just regulated to being a spot up catch and shoot player who makes plays off of the bounce, who creates out of the post and in transition. There is still room for him to experiment and try certain things. And I think he did that last night too. On this possession here, within the flow of the offense, a dribble handoff, he pulls up, one, two dribble, splash right in the middle. 
that is something in rhythm that he can get to consistently. And still, with the Raptors, he has moments where he can experiment and show off a little bit of his creation juice. On this possession, you know, it's kind of dying clock, if you will, a little bit later in the shot clock. They need something to go down. They look to OG. He takes Zach Levine, a nice little tween dribble, step back, and he hits the jumper. That shot's not going to happen all the time. He's not going to hit that shot often. Uh, in fact, you know, one of the areas of concern over the last couple of years is his balance on those shots. Although I think he has improved when it comes to those pull-up jumpers, I think the way that he will be maximized eventually, the, the like prime version of OG Ananobi is this spot up catch and shoot deadly shooter who can pull up for you a little bit, who can be a dominant post presence for you, who can cut off the ball, who can be elite as a playmaker, who is dominant in transition just because of his brute strength and size and speed. And ultimately, it's like a it's like a massive version of Klay Thompson. Yeah, I'm I'm using that as sort of a, a reference because people think of, hey, 11 dribbles with Klay Thompson, right? That's the famous thing to think of when you think of Klay. OG had an incredible night tonight off of 13 dribbles. And I think some people mistake creation for ball handling and dribbling. And I think OG actually had a considerable amount of ball handling tonight, a considerable amount of like, creating and and you know opening up the floor for the raptors it just wasn't in the conventional way that you think of like an all-star type player or a superstar type player but og did play like an all-star tonight clay thompson has been a multi-time all-star in this league there is different ways to get to the same result in the nba and i think i think og can do that as well uh now to be fair you know, there's been reports, whatever, the reports that have happened over the last couple of years about him wanting to maximize his role to experiment, to do different things. And I think in this system, he will have room to try those things. Ultimately, I do think, though, that when it comes to like the future version of this team, which I do think OG is going to play a massive part in, it's going to be a guy like this, a guy who can defend the hell out of a ball going to be a defensive player of the year type candidate all defense type player we already know what the defensive side of the ball is with og but the way he's maximized offensively is an elite three-point shooter a guy who can spot it for you off of the catch feast 39 40 percent from three for his career and a guy who can be this dominant transition piece for you a guy who can make plays off of the bounce for you to pass to others which is something that he's improved in markedly and then yeah he might be able to give you some creation reps here and there. Uh, and if he improves in that area, hey, the more the merrier. But ultimately, I think this just really impressed me. Uh, because and, and this is something that I've been mulling over for a little bit, to be honest with you. It's like, how do you find the most effective version of a player? And OG, it seems like it's right there for him. You know, having this type of game shows that it's possible. And yeah, it needs to be more consistent. It needs to happen more often. I think the San Antonio game was also a great example of him sort of maximizing how he looks. Um, but ultimately, that's what the season's for. It's like, hey, let's see what these guys can do. And uh, hey, it's been fun so far. They're 500, eight and eight, playing the Cleveland Cavaliers on Sunday. They are out of the in-season tournament, unfortunately. Not too much in-season tournament basketball left for the Raptors. They have the Nets on Tuesday, but hey, the regular season still continues. There's still tons of questions to ask about this team, especially the future, yada, yada, yada. But ultimately, they're not that bad. They're kind of fun to watch, too. Honestly, the way that they play unselfishly and they move the rock, especially tonight, it's a lot of fun to watch. So thank you very much for tapping in. Tap into the Objective Basketball Podcast if you're interested in all things NBA. And uh, as always, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you later. Take care.